Hey guys, uh, Rock here in uh, Island Pond, Vermont. Uh, today we got the 2019 Polaris Sportsman 570 X2. Um, I'll go ahead and do a walk around on this thing, a little bit of, of an overview, and then we'll take it for a test drive like we always do. So this is uh, it's, uh, morning right now, so it's uh we got some dew on there but this is in real nice shape um 2019 it does have 1700 miles on it but uh but it's got a lot of nice features so as you can see um you get a nice cargo box back here that uh you just hit the lever and you can dump that um, and you've got a tailgate also that comes down so that's pretty handy um, another thing the X2 has is the ability to ride a two-up uh, for a touring machine. As you can see, it's got the second rider's um, footrest there. And what you do is you unlock this backrest, slide the seat forward, and then you pull up this. A little easier to do with two hands. This folds down. And then this is has the ability to adjust up and down to wherever you, you want it. And it turns into a fully functional touring machine. Which is real nice. I don't know any other machine that has the ability to change from cargo to a seat like that. So that's, that's a nice unit. Um, uh, standard Sportsman 570 where you got the uh, cargo box up front. Give you a nice little storage in there. Um, and I believe, actually, no, I guess on this X2, you don't have a storage in the back. With a normal 570s, you would. But, uh, but you got a lot of room back here if you wanted to carry something. So that's nice. Um, another feature on this 570 is you have turf mode. So what that does, it actually unlocks the rear differential. So when you're driving on your lawn or whatnot, it uh, you get an open differential and it uh, won't tear up as much as if the both axles were locked in. Um, then you got two-wheel drive, which is both axles locked in the rear. You got four-wheel drive, which is actually an all-wheel drive setting. Um, so all four wheels will kick in <clears throat> when needed. And then over here, you get what they call an active descent control. Now this, when you're going down um, hills, if you throw that in, it, it'll, uh, it's got engine braking all the time. But when you do this, it seems more aggressive and it actually, um, your four wheel drive will, your front tires will also slow down instead of just the rear, which is nice because if the rear start binding up, with the regular engine braking, you'll kind of, it might lose control a little bit. You do a little sliding where this will take care of that. So, um, the gauge, pretty nice gauge on it. Uh, you got uh, your engine temp, um, tells you what, uh, if you're in two wheel drive, four wheel drive, active descent. Um, you can see right there, I put it in turf mode. So it shows one of the rear tires locked in. Right there is regular two-wheel drive. Um, what do we got for options? So you can change RPM and put your temperature up there. Speed. That's about it for the top one. Um, so the second one, you got RPM, uh, speed, your uh, odometer, which like I said is 1,700 miles on this. Um, you got a trip one, a trip two, shows you your voltage, uh, your engine hours, uh, the time you have left until service is due, and then this is apparently total time that your ignition has been on, even though it's not running. I'm not sure why that's on there. To me, it's not very important, but, but yeah, so that's, uh. That's the basics of it. Let's uh, let's take this thing for a ride.
All right, hop on here. So normal pull air ignition. You turn the key, let the fuel pump cycle, and uh, you do. I believe in any gear you have to, yeah, you have to hold the brake on this one, and then you just turn it over like a vehicle. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, gear selectors over here. Throw it in. We'll throw it in high. We'll take this thing for a ride. So basically, on the 570 X2, you have two versions you can get. You can get the the plain, or the normal model, and then you can get the EPS. Uh, this has the it's electronic power steering which this has and it's actually it's it's ridiculous how easy this thing does turn um, I mean it's it's really a one finger type of deal it's almost too much when you're going down the road it almost feels kind of squirrely just because you don't have the feedback um, that you would with a non power steering unit or with one that has uh, that has a little more feedback, not quite so aggressive on the assist, but uh, but yeah. Anyways, um, it is a great feature. I mean, you do not feel any of the rocks in the trail at all. Um, so I do like that. Nope, got a little rabbit there. Um, so this this 570. You do have the ability to put the low beams on, which are on the bottom. I know you can't really see them too good right, right now. Or your high beam, which actually turns all three on. So that's a nice feature. Because I think some of the... I'm not sure if all the 570s have the ability to do this. I know the older ones, um, like say 2014, um, if you didn't have the <clears throat> EPS model, it didn't turn... You could either have one or the other on. You couldn't have both. So... So that is nice that you can have both on because it makes a big difference uh, at night anyways. So we'll let the engine temperature get up get up to temp and then, uh, then I'll get on to her a little more and I'll uh, take it down the road. We'll do a top speed test. Um, kind of curious because this is a little bit bigger machine than the normal 570 but uh, it's impressive uh, what they get what they're claiming they push out of these 570s I think 44 horsepower um, that's what it's always been maybe they've raised it lately I don't think so but for a 570 that's doing pretty good where if you look at the older 500 say EFI I think they're around 30 34 horsepower and then uh, your HO was 32 or so so they're actually looking pretty good in the horsepower department on this and uh, yeah so, yeah we're about 170 degrees right now so we can get on to it a little bit more uh, yeah forget the uh, Oh, my two up. If you if you don't have somebody on here, I mean it's locked into place, but it does make a lot of a uh, lot of movement, a lot of noise. So if you're not riding with a second person back there, I would just keep it. Uh, uh, like that. Um, I just keep it down. Oh yeah, that's right. You gotta hold, put that all the way down, and then we can do that. Gotta remember all these little little fine tuning things. <laughs> All right, so yeah, back to the ride. So it's got plenty of get up and go. Right there, 37 miles an hour. And uh, this thing really does ride nice. It's actually expecting it to be a little bit, uh, a little stiff because they get the cargo box, which uh, I think, I'm not sure I can't see the sticker from here but I think the payload's like 300 pounds that you can put in the rear cargo 
which is pretty decent. I think like a Ranger mid-size, you're talking uh, their payload's 400. So it's pretty good for this thing. Like a normal uh, 570, usually the specs on them for the uh, rear rack, they get the plastic rack just to, you know, how much weight you can put on there. They, they claim like 200, do not exceed 200. Now, I mean, I've known a lot of people that do. It's not a big deal. Um, they, they'll handle the weight. It's just probably your handling characteristics change quite a bit. Uh, all right, so get uh, down through here. Has a trees. Try out uh, a little rock pile down here that most of these machines will hit bottom, and they get a little. They struggle a little bit, um, but I think this has got enough clearance, and we got the all-wheel drive. And we got a little extra wheelbase compared to the normal ATVs, so. One thing about these 570 single cylinders, they uh, they really do have a lot of low end. And uh, I mean, you can ride around in high range pretty much anywhere. I mean, unless you're towing something, or maybe if you do have uh, your cargo loaded, um, and you're going real slow, you might want to lose, use low, but really you just don't need it. Um, I mean, obviously going real, real slow over these rocks, I'm going to put it in low, but it, it does have enough power. You ain't going to worry about, and we'll throw her in all-wheel drive. Um, you really don't have to worry about uh, burning your belt up because it's geared just right. So this is uh, usually... Yeah, we got hung up a little bit. Obviously, we could have avoided that, but I wanted to see how it could do. So, backed up here. There we go. Not bad. And man, the uh, power steering. <laughs> it's just, I can't get over how easy it really is. It's uh, even uh, right now I have it in all wheel drive and there's no steering effort at all. <laughs> so, yeah, probably throw it back in two wheel and high range. Like I said, you can cruise around. What am I doing? Five, six miles an hour. <clears throat> Great in high range. And that way you're not over revving the engine a lot and uh, just uh, it's just a good setup how they got this what do we got on here yeah we're say 3200 rpms this is a dual overhead cam engine so I'm not exactly sure on the uh, like the red line but uh, we'll probably find out when we do that top speed test should well get well into the 60s um, mid 60s we'll see I know the older 500s could do about 60, but uh, it uh, this is probably going to get there a little quicker, I'm guessing. It all depends on the gear ratio, too, because uh, this is kind of a utility model or a crossover. I don't know what they would call this. Normally, if you got a cargo bed, it would be utility, but uh, where it's got the ability to be a touring machine, I don't know. Um, as far as noise, this thing is pretty quiet. It really is. If you're just cruising along, which makes a nice hunting vehicle. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't. Uh, we can try that down here. We got a nice steep hill. Try the active descent control. Um, pick up a little speed do 10 and just let it off and you can feel this thing just 
just really push you forward <laughs> it, it'll crawl this is high range too uh, I'm sure low would you'd probably almost stop um, it's really just holding you and you take that off and the engine braking is still there it's just it doesn't maybe it's because the rear uh, front wheels aren't activated but if yeah see it's it's letting us roll a little bit not bad but throw that active descent control on and it really does just creep yeah that's a nice feature but I don't need to go that slow so we'll take it off right now uh, looks like some moose been uh, coming up through here all right let's get on a little bit faster pace here and then uh, once I hit the road, I'll do the, I'll come to a stop and we'll do a top speed kind of acceleration test. setting is right now I wouldn't change it toggle uh, so back here the uh, engine temperature on this thing seems to run around uh, like it bounces back and forth from 170, uh, like mid 170s to 200. I've seen it hit, I think, or maybe not quite 200. I don't know. The uh, the fan kicks on around 190 something, and then it'll cool it back down. But when you're cruising like this, it's really not that warm today. Um, you know, it kind of regulates itself pretty much. Put it back on RPMs for our uh, acceleration little test here all right so we'll see what we can do uh, two-wheel drive definitely don't want it in turf mode <laughs> um, and yeah we'll just get on to her as you can see it picks up speed real nice that's 60 miles an hour right there. We're looking at, there's the mid 60s that I thought top speed would be. We're at 7,300 RPMs. One little last stretch here. 67, 68, 69. Oh, I felt the rev limiter kick in. And uh, that was, uh, about 7400 rpms actually um, so yeah pretty good um, impressed with the machine and uh, yeah for a, you know this is not a this is not a big bore machine this is a 570 um, which is more of a I don't know mid-size I guess call it I don't know what they consider this now it used to be a big machine but um, but where you got 1000s out there now, I don't know. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got plenty of others on there of uh, test driving different uh, ATVs and stuff. Uh, just check out the channel. Alright, thanks. Have a good one.